I'm Gray, otherwise known as the Broken Healer. Today I'm here with Susie Byler. She uh, comes down from Sedona. She's a spiritual guide, and she's going to be doing a session here with me today. Well, thanks for being receptive and open to this. And just to briefly explain, uh, I work with sensitive empaths. People are familiar with affirmations, but I work with questions because when you ask a question, you are eliciting from your body and from your being the answer and you're giving that opportunity for for the eyes forth from within you. If you say an affirmation and your body doesn't believe that it's true, then you develop this internal conflict and the affirmation doesn't work. When you ask questions, you really get to give yourself a chance to generate the answer. So I'm gonna let Gray describe the issue that he's dealing with. Uh, thank you. So the, uh, the issues that I deal with is uh, I have a lot of conflict from my past. Moving on from our past is a difficult thing. Mine comes with anger. I, I dream all night long about people that I'm in confrontation with that we're fighting. And then I wake up angry. So in order for me to be able to function throughout the day, I have to calm myself. I have to give it back to God every morning pray through it and put on my protection and, and get that peace going again. Otherwise, confrontation happens with me all day long because of my body language and okay. my presentation. Got it. Okay. Miscommunication. So if this resonates with you, you can do this along with us. So I just invite you to place a hand over your heart and close your eyes and take a deep breath. And the first question you're going to ask yourself, how does it feel to release anger from my body? be able to release that anger is is the goal and the point but it's perceived by other people as violence when there is no violence it's just anger then we're going to ask how does it feel to be at peace with my past i think i feel like i would be able to function in a normal capacity every single day and so the idea with this question this one really landed with you. So the idea with this question is to keep asking it every day until you start to feel it in your body where you actually start to feel like you're at peace with your past. How does it feel to forgive myself? Exceptional. How does it feel to forgive the people in my past? Hard, difficult. So then that's where you want to focus. You want to ask that question over and over until you start to feel some of that peace within your body, until you start to feel some of that forgiveness. I do feel the forgiveness. I forgive everybody mm -hmm. on the emotions, the feelings that right. come on. Right. And, uh, and it's, a new, it's a different thing when you have to forgive somebody that you feel don't deserve forgiveness. In your mind, you've forgiven. Still, you're still carrying in your body the unforgiveness to some extent and so you want to ask that question until you get to the place where what you just said isn't a thing that's a serious question yeah so you can also come up with your own questions the ones that will move the most energy you want to look for the charge you want to look for the trigger you want to feel where the most energy is in the question and focus on on that and family a lot of it revolves around family yeah. And so there's a lot of emotion involved. And right. When there's emotion involved with me, I don't communicate hardly very well at all. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to communicate, but it uh, with but it's blocked. With your family? With anybody. When, when there's feelings involved or emotions involved. Like, I love my kids and okay. I love my, my family. You're telling me that when emotion arises then it becomes difficult to communicate it does because that emotions there and it's like i don't know if it's because i don't want to mess up the conversation because of the past if i mm -hmm. feel you know taken advantage of used abused mm -hmm. abandoned larger perspective of what we want to experience with this particular issue is being able to feel and observe your emotions while you're in conversation with somebody being able to maintain your composure to be able to speak something while you're feeling. That's what the emotional self-regulation is. So when you ask, how does it feel to regulate my emotion? How does it feel to have the awareness of my emotion in communication with someone? That's what we're going for. So you might find a question that works even better for you than what I've generated. You find that one question 
Yeah. Or it could be a series of questions. It doesn't necessarily have to be one. Well, I, I know that I'm the number one denominator right. in it all. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have to look back at my behavior and, and my reaction. Right. And the looks that were on my face, my body language. So it could be, how does it feel to take personal responsibility for my actions? Yeah. That could be a question you can ask yourself, That's always too. something that's been very difficult for me. I've always taken things as a grain of salt, even like when, not only when I get injured or something bad goes wrong, I'm like, well, that's over. It's time to move forward. And I just truck forward. So. Taking personal responsibility isn't holding on. It's the thing that actually enables you to let go. Yeah. If something happens to you, that's different. But if if you generated something against someone else, then that's where you take personal responsibility. See, I get confused then, so very much because there were so many false claims against me on things that I supposedly did or the way that I was or the person who I was. Everybody around me was telling me who I am mm -hmm. and who I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That wasn't who I was, but I took it on as a character because they said I was. And I'm like, I trust this person. And if they're telling me that I'm a narcissist, then I must be. How does it feel to have clarity about who I am? It's life altering uh, to the point to where I feel like I can thrive. Beautiful. So when you ask that question, breathe into that feeling of knowing that you can thrive. How does it feel to accept who I am? Awkward, but coming. Okay. How does it feel to be integrated with who I am? A nice. never ending process. Yeah. When you ask these questions, sometimes you get answers like Gray is giving and sometimes it's murky and muddy and you might not feel anything and that's okay. But you want to keep asking the question over and over. This is, this is a tool. This is not like a once and done spontaneous healing thing, although that can happen sometimes. But for the most part, this is a tool where when you ask the question, then you do it again tomorrow and the next day. Because the more you do it, the more you're going to generate the energy and the answers from within your being. And that's what you want. You know, we're always seeking outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, give me the answer. Tell me God, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when we ask these questions, it's generate the information from within us. Sitting with these questions, meditating, praying with these questions, taking a walk and asking these questions. Do it getting yourself in a quiet place as much as possible so you can feel, so you can receive the answers. And like I said at the beginning, this works really well with sensitive empaths because we're feelers. Yeah. So when you ask these feeling questions, then you can start to feel the energy of it. And then the more you feel the energy of it, the more you shift. Can you, can you, you actually just describe empath or sensitive empath? What's the difference and kind of what that is? Yeah. Well, there are people who are sensitive who aren't empathic. And to be empathic means that you feel other people's feelings. You feel energies outside of yourself. You feel things that aren't necessarily yours to feel. But to be a sensitive empath means you have the empathic abilities, plus you're also very <laughs> sensitive. The way I describe it or experience it is my system is very open and so I'm always feeling and receiving information because I'm, I'm sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, me, I always feel like I need to put a guard up. Yeah. And that guard presents itself as anger or don't mess with him. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, it's very and I common. I think it's a self defense mechanism. Yes. It's very common to want to have, when you're sensitive, to want to have layers of protection because the world can feel harsher. It can feel more amazing than most people experience it or it can feel uh, more traumatic. And so it, it's very common for sensitive people to want to have layers of protection and, and guards and things like that. Yeah. Oh, we got a visitor. Hi, sweetie. Hi, little bee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound healing. Yeah, you had an amazing mentor. I did, yeah. yeah. What was, who was that? Ken Chin was my mentor. He passed in April. It's such a blessing to have someone like that in my life. He left anything. behind a great gift, you know, the gift of, uh, of healing yeah. and discernment. Yeah. And, and I thank you very much for your time that you spent with me. It, uh, it really does make a huge difference in my life. Thank you for receiving. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to hire Susie yourself? She does Zoom meetings. You can go to creationtemple.com and you find me there. Creationtemple.com. There you heard it. <laughs> Thank you.